Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live and today is May 5th, 2021 and we are in the final hour of the trading day. As you know, the final hour of the trading day is my preferred time to make the majority of my buying and selling decisions. And I say this because at the end of the day, the large financial institutions come in, they take control of the price away from the day traders and the algorithms and they move it to what in my opinion is the most valid price uh, or in other words they move it to a certain level that's either over my stop under my stop and it gives me good solid data in order to make the my decisions for my swing trades whether i'm getting out staying in entering a new trade not getting into a new trade but they deal with the most money they have very smart people they have the best technology best information and in the in the long term, I believe it provides a excuse me provides a long term edge for your trading. So thank you all for coming today. I appreciate it. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you're having a good day, nice pleasant day. It's a beautiful day here in Utah, just nice and sunny. And after the podcast, we're gonna go out for a nice big hike. So I'm looking forward to that. So, all right, here's the plan for today. First of all, we are gonna run the US legal disclaimer. Secondly, we're gonna come back, take a look at my current positions, talk about when I bought them, why I bought them, and how I'm going to manage them moving forward. I did, ha did have a couple day trades today that I will share with you as well. Uh, after that, we're gonna go over to the board and my students have some of their positions on there. We're gonna check those out. Uh, I do see some green, see some red, so a little bit of a mixed bag. So we'll go over there and we'll take a look at uh, those trades and where they entered and where the stock price is now. After that, uh, going to switch gears, talk a little bit about trader psychology. Most important skill in trading, everyone, it really is. There's no such thing as a holy grail trading approach. There are trading approaches that work sometimes, don't work other times. You have to be in sync with the market, but what you always need to be in sync with is your emotions and emotions are the number one factor in in my opinion of whether or not you're going to be a long-term profitable trader and what i mean by that is can you stick to your plan all right so i like to talk about trader psychology i hope it's help it's always helpful for me you know they say you teach what you most learn to know so that's what i like about being able to teach this because it always helps me and i hope that it helps you after that i have gone down through my watch list I have gone down through the results of Kamal Scanner. As you know, I have three requirements whenever I'm looking to enter a new trade. First requirement, I wanna have a confluence or a combination of indicators lining up on multiple time frames, if possible, ideally. Uh, number two, I have to make sure that I have a good risk to reward ratio based upon a strong and solid support level below me and juxtapose that with where the resistance is above me. And that distance needs to be at least two to one so that you have an asymmetrical trade. Number three, kind of big picture, but please, before you enter any trade, make sure that you have a plan. Make sure you have a full plan, regardless of what the market does. We need to position size based upon the current market volatility. This is something I see most traders not do. Right, I think it's very important. Number two, you have to know how many shares you're gonna buy based upon that volatility. You have to know where your emergency stop is gonna be, or in other words, what is the maximum allowed loss that you're willing to take on a trade. You have to know where your end of day stop is, uh, intraday profit targets, uh, um, significant overhead resistance levels like the 50 RSI, 50 SMA, overhead moving averages, and then you have to have a protocol, you have to have a plan in order to uh, a trailing a trailing stop plan or protocol so that if the trade does start moving your way, um, you know, there are certain things that can happen that will indicate to you, okay, it's time to get out of half here or time to get out of everything so you don't give all those profits back. All right. So I'm going to go down the, through the potential end of day candidates using those three criteria and uh, I'll try to narrow it down to the best one, one or two, who knows. Um, 
And if I find something at the end of the day, I will go ahead and purchase it. All right, and then after the market closes, if anybody has any questions for me, please just let me know. I'm happy to clarify. Um, I'm here to help, so if there's anything I can help you with, just ask me, don't be shy. If there are any stock symbols that you would like me to look at, please let me know, I'm happy to do that as well. Put an emoji by it so I know it's time sensitive and I will do my very best to get to it before the close of the market. And then lastly, if any of my students have new any new entries or exits for me today, if you could please wait till the market is closed before you let me know about them and that way the pressure's off, I'm done teaching, trading, and then we'll spend as much time as we need to get those all updated, okay? So I am going to run the U.S. legal disclaimer and grab my can of water and um, I will see you in about 40 seconds. Thank you. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right, let's see who is here today. Lava74 is here. Good to see you, Lava. Hope you are doing well. Hope you are having a good day, and I'm looking forward to your analysis today. Paxton is here. Good to see you, Packy. Hope you're doing well. If Tracy's there, please give her my best. Kamal is here. Hey, bud. Good to see you. Hope you are having a good day as well. Thank you for everything that you do for this channel, Kamal. I really do appreciate it. Dan says, Gossip Familia, happy Cinco de Mayo. Oh, is it Cinco de Mayo today? Well, happy Cinco de Mayo to you as well, Dan. Thank you very much and good seeing you. Lava says, Marvel, yesterday, V1, with the rejection of the 200 SMA and the negative third ATR channel, one of very few stocks that isn't feeling selling pressure from everyone who caught falling knives last Thursday. Week weekly equals false breakout down. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, so yesterday was a nice V1 rejection of the negative third ATR channel, V1 rejection of the 200 day. Uh, did bounce today, did have some follow through, but uh, see right here how we rejected the negative one ATR channel above as resistance. Um, that's a little concerning. Uh, I like this weekly though. As a matter of fact, if Marvel triggers a V1 on Friday, I might buy it on the weekly. Um, on the daily, you know, I would like to see this come back and back test this 200 day moving average, have a higher low V1 or V2 or a higher low rejection of the 200 day moving average. You know, whenever we have a lower low, we tend to bounce. A lot of times we'll come back and test. That's why I'm not too quick to jump on lower low closes back above the uh, 200. I mean, I will if the risk to reward ratio is good, but you know, here we had selling into this negative one ATR channel. I would like to see this come back and give me another at least intraday rejection of the 200 day moving average. That is really what I would be looking for and or buying this on the weekly. And you, you know, you'd say, well, if you're not going to buy it on the daily, why would you buy it on the weekly? Because I would buy fewer shares and I would have more breathing room as far as my stop goes. I, I, you know, we've rejected the, the negative one, we've rejected the five. I think, I mean, that was a strong move with strong volume yesterday, but I like the retest of the major moving averages. So I hope that helps. Uh, Miko is here. Good to see you, Miko. Hope you are doing well. Hope the family is doing well. Um, hope your training is also going well. Steve Burns is here. Steve, good to see you, sir. Always nice to have you here. Always an honor and a privilege. Thank you for everything that you do for this channel, Steve. I really mean that. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, uh, George is here. Gonzalez, good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Hi, Greg and Gregorians. Good to see you, George. Hope you're having a nice one. 
Gary says, hello, Greg and group. Hey, buddy, good to see you. Haven't got back to you with the email yet, Gary, but I am planning on that so we can get together on those options. George says, CPB is in the value zone, cross 200 and 100 SMA. Today, V1. Campbell Soup, huh? Yes, it's a V1, technically, George. But if you want to be specific about it, today's low did wash out yesterday's low, but not by a quarter ATR. But I do like that we held support here at the 200-day moving average. We went under 50, over 50. You know, if I were to buy this, let's take a quick look at the weekly. Weekly looks pretty good, too. If I were to, if I were to buy this today... I would use that 50 day moving average as my stop. So if it closed halfway below that, I would get out. But that's that's fair that's fairly it's fairly good. I I like that we technically have a higher low V1 on this and it's a bullish engulfing bar as well with some increased volume in the day isn't even over. So not too bad. Yuvar is here. Hi Yuvar, nice to see you. Jonathan is here. Good to see you, Jonathan. Hope you are doing well and having a nice evening in Ireland. David is here. Hello, Mr. David. Good to see you, sir. Frank is here. Hello, Greg and group. Hello, Frank. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. Thank you for everything that you do for this channel on a daily basis, Frank. I, I mean that. And John Dakota says, Ma, I think that means M-A, right? Well, I don't really like this. Uh, we have a V1 to the downside. We possibly had a rejection of the 50. Let's see. Yep, we had a rejection of the 50 RSI. We have a rejection of the 50 day moving average. We're outside of the value zone. I, I wouldn't buy it here. Um, no, we have a, we have a 520 cross under that's all of those things are concerning to me. Yep. MasterCard. Yep. All right. Well, let's start. Uh, AGQ Gary, not Gary and I bought AGQ on the weekly bars, return to value sideways motion. Nice V2 entry when I took it under 50 RSI, over 50 RSI, under 50, over 50. Bought it here at 43.96. Moved up nicely. A couple weeks went straight up. Then we had a close back below the 50 RSI. I sold half this week. It has moved up. Uh, did hit one profit target here at 48.53. It's currently up 4.6365% so far on the week. And on the trade, it's up 8.26%. So pretty good so far um, on, on AGQ. Budweiser. Well, I'm going to be saying goodbye to Budweiser today. I'm in this. Jonathan, Frank, Gary, David bought this with a higher low V2 at 62.91. It's currently 70.53. They have earnings tomorrow morning. I'm going to get out before earnings, so I will be saying goodbye to Budweiser, but this was a great trade, up 10.38% on the trade. CGC. This one did not work out so hot tamale. I bought this yesterday with a double bottom bullish divergence V1 close above the 200-day moving average. That is my line in the sand, the 200. This does look like it will close below the 200 day moving average today. So in this case, I will be going ahead and locking in a loss about 1.68% on this trade. Goldman Sachs has been a monster trade. Uh, Gary and, oh, I think I'm, no, I think Gary got out yesterday. So I bought Goldman Sachs with a 520 crossover at 335.28, moved up nicely. This bar got me out of half, unfortunately, but it's okay because I was following my rules. Whenever I take a crossover, if the price closes below both the five and the 20, I get out of half. But the good news is I held on to half for this next beautiful leg up. 
Uh, it's up 2.28% today. Has not rejected the, the 70 RSI, I don't believe. 67.63, so two profit targets, one at 353.23 and one at 356.62. So um, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna see if we get some more upward movement tomorrow and see if I can reject the 70 RSI. If we do, I'll get out of half there. But anyway, this has been a really, really nice trade. I did get out of half for a little bit of a loss. Um, so this number isn't accurate, but you know, if you just held this, it was up 6.26%, but I've taken profits, so it's not that much, but still a really, really good trade. CarMax has been another good trade. I bought CarMax with a 520 crossover, 131.21 has moved up nicely, got to my trailing stop level of 1.5 ATRs for my entry price. No trailing stop. Uh, have triggered here. We are above the 65 RSI. So if we reject, if we close below the 5 EMA, I will get out of the entire trade. Uh, 66.42, it was higher today. Got up to 67.93. It's a bit of a strange, strange candle here. I did hit one profit target too at the very top, at the very top actually, exactly the very top, 138.77. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna just keep this play off the five EMA moving average or see if we can reject the 50 day. Sprouts Fresh Market. Now well, this one has not worked out so well. I did take this two days ago with this higher low V2. Bought this at 26.54. My stop is halfway of the washout bar at 25.86. Um, yesterday we tested the stop loss level, closed above. Today we went below, closed above. Oh. I'm going to have to get out of this today. I forgot earnings are tomorrow morning. So I am going to have to get out of Sprouts Fresh Market today as well. Um, yeah, so I am going to have to lock in the loss on this trade here because earnings are tomorrow. All right, overnight spy trade. Had a nice overnight spy trade. I buy it every day at the close. I, I hold it overnight. I take the overnight risk and I sell it first thing the next morning. I bought it at 4.15.62 yesterday, sold it right at the open at 417.43, so almost $2 on the overnight trades, which is good. And again, I will buy this again tomorrow, or today at the close. On the monthly, I have a monthly trade here with David Paxton and Tracy and myself, higher low V2 at 1052. It's 1054, it's up a little, not too much, but uh, this is a monthly trade, so I'll make my decisions at the end of the day. And then Honeywell. Um, I'm going to show you the intraday trade first. I had a losing intraday uh, day trade. I bought here. I like the setup. False breakout to the downside in the V1. I bought at 226.82. Um, next bar came down, closed below halfway the washout bar. So that was a loss. So I bought at 226.82 and got out at 226.72. So 20 cent loss on that, which is survivable, I would say. And then I also took a swing trade, regular trade on uh, Honey, Honeywell yesterday. I like this setup a lot, return to value, sideways motion. We had a false breakout to the downside, bullish engulfing bar, V1, under 50, over 50, 520 crossover. <clears throat> Excuse me, I bought it at 225.14. It's currently 226.43, so it is up 0.44% today, and I was able to take off a partial profit uh, today at 227.01. So this one looks good. Um, and then Netflix, uh, I also have Netflix. Oh, I'm gonna show you the intraday on this as well. All right, I bought Netflix here with this higher low bullish engulfing bar V1. I bought it at 50, 50, I'm sorry, 503.12. Next bar moved up nicely. I sold half at 503.79. Continued up, got to my 1.5% 1.5 ATR level trailing stop. Once it does that, if it ever comes back to my entry price, I get out for break even. So the second half was totally break even, but the first half was 503.12 and sold half at 503.79. And then on the daily, I also have a daily trade on this that I bought at 
right here, sideways motion, false break of the downside, rejection of the 250. I bought it at 508.63, moved up a bit. Yesterday came down, tested the 250, but held above. It kept me in. Um, oh, yeah, that align I raised. I did hit one profit target today near the top, but today it looks like it's going to close under the 250. So I'm going to have to get out of this as well. So just so I am have these things lined up here, I will be exiting Budweiser today. Really nice trade. I will be exiting this for earnings tomorrow. Sprouts Fresh Market. I will be exiting this even though it's holding the halfway of the washout bar. Earnings are tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and sell this as well. And then Netflix, barring some kind of rally at the end of the day, I'll be selling this also. Um, but all in all, not too bad of a day. So Pet Gary bought Pets, this nice V1 bullish engulfing bar. He bought it at $29.49. And it's currently 3017. It is down a little bit on the day, but it is nicely up on the trade. So congratulations, Gary. Beyond Meat. Steve bought Beyond Meat yesterday with uh, 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 a bounce near the 30 RSI. Bought it at 124.70. It's currently 120.63. So down, down on the day and uh, this one down on the trade. ARK, A-R-K-K, Paxton and Tracy bought ARK with the 200-day deep dip by intraday rejection at 113.30. It's currently 111.24, so this one is down on the day, down on the trade, and it has lost the 200-day moving average. Fiverr, Steve bought Fiverr yesterday with this bounce near the 200-day moving average, bought it at 190.92. It's currently 181.36. So this one is down on the day, and it, this one also is uh, has lost the 200-day moving average. ELY. This is Frank. Frank's had a nice trade on this. He bought this at 27.75. It's 28.87. It's unchanged, but nicely up on the trade. NVAX. Man, I'm glad you got out of that other 5%. NVAX, the biggest trade I've seen all year from this group. Um, Frank bought this at 135, screamed up. He sold 90% of his position when it more than doubled, moved back down. He, kept, he held 10%, um, had this big, huge up bar here, and that was a perfect opportunity to sell half of what he had left. So he only has 5% left, but this has been a beautiful trade. C E I N Tracy and Paxton bought C E I N a couple days ago at 5135. It's currently 5109. It is up on the day, but it is slightly down on the trade. And then last but not least is pins. Steve bought pins yesterday with a bounce near the 30 RSI and a bounce near the 200 day. He bought it at 6137. It's 6145. So uh, down a little on the day, but he got in a little early and got a better price. So it is down on the day, but he's still up on the trade. Uh huh. Okay. So again, Budweiser, I'm getting rid of Budweiser. It's been a great trade, but they have earnings tomorrow. Sprouts, Sprouts Fresh Market, getting rid of that because of earnings tomorrow. And Netflix definitely looks like it's going to close below the 250-day moving average. Yvar says BLDR. That's not bad. That's a false breakout to the downside and a, and a V1, at least right now. And it's above the 50 RSI. Good job, Yuvar. John says, thank you. I'm making sure my analysis was good. Good. Good, good. Frank has a poem for us. Or one of my favorite parts of the podcast when we have poems. So let me put this up here. And let's see what Frank has to say today. It's easy to make a million on Wall Street if you start out with two. Please don't let that happen to you. If trading is the business you want to pursue, never ever buy off more than you can chew. Boy, is that true. That's an old joke. How do you make a million dollars in the airlines? In the stock market, you start with two. 
It's easy to make a million on, on Wall Street if you start out with two. Please don't let this happen to you. If trading is the business you want to pursue, never ever bite off more than you can chew. So true, so good. Uh, LM5667, how you doing? Will we see Amazon recovery? Well, let me look into my crystal ball and see. Oh, I don't have a crystal ball. So this, this is how I would look at Amazon. I like Amazon very much, but I would look for, I would not be surprised to see this move down to the 200 day moving average. There's a little bit of a buyer strike. Whenever you get close to the 200 day moving average, I've noticed people go on, on strikes and go, I'll buy it, but not until it gets to the 200 day moving average. And that's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy that brings it back down there. I would definitely be a buyer if I had a nice intraday rejection at the 200 day moving average. Where it is right now, um, it, you know, it looks like there's some open space to go down there. So I don't know what's going to happen with Amazon. Uh, but the way that I look at this LM5 56, 66, I would look for a bounce intraday rejection or a close under close over the 200 day. That's what I would be looking for. John Dakota says, do you use support and resistance? Yes, of course. A hundred percent, John. That's, I mean, just here on this Amazon chart, when I'm talking about the 200 day moving average, this is what I'm I'm looking at this 200 day as support. Now, if the 200 day were also down here at this previous low, that would be double support. You'd have a support of the 200 day moving average and a support of the previous low. But in this case, I still look at the 200 day moving average as support. Uh, John, John, good to see you, bud. Hope you're having a good day. Always nice to see you. John says, does Kamal follow I, IBM? I don't know. Kamal, if you're out there, Let's look at IBM right now. Doing pretty strongly, but up here near the third ATR channel, you know, I want it just like here, back in the value zone is where I want to buy. I don't want to buy up here. I would wait for a pullback into the value zone. Hmm. So the NASDAQ is now negative 57 points. Oh my. All right, let me take care of a little biz here. And a little biz over here. All right, business taken care of, business taken care of. All right, so listen, before we start looking at potential end of day trades, let's just switch gears for a second and let's talk about trader psychology, shall we? It's the most important skill. I say that every day. I know I say it ad nauseum, but I do it with love, everybody, because uh, for those of you who have been traders for decades, uh, you one day will get the aha moment and go, boy, I'm really my own worst enemy by maybe not following my plans because my emotions got revved up, right? So this is from Timothy Westley Richards over at the New Traders, Rich Traders uh, channel over on Facebook. This is a really great Facebook channel. Steve's over there, Kamal's over there, Tom Basso's over there, Mark Minervini is over there. Um, I'm over there. Uh, and it's a great channel. So go over and apply. You have to apply, but, uh, there's serious traders there with good information. I don't personally know Timothy Wesley Richards, but this is a really, really good post. I mean, it's an excellent post because, you know, if you've known me for a while and understand how I look at trading, this really pinpoints it. Risk management is even more important than methodology at least get that right. You can always treat them, tweak the method later. And this is so true. You know, if, if people say, hey, what's the most important, um, what's the most important thing about trading? What's the most important concept? 
And my opinion, you know, might surprise you. It's your position size. It's not your methodology or what you use to enter or exit a trade. It's your position size. Because you, even if you have the best setup in the world, if you position size too large or use margin or lots of leverage, it doesn't matter how good that entry is. Because if you bet too much on it, you could lose. It's like Russian roulette, right? I mean, if you have a six shooter and you put a bullet in one and you spin, are the odds in your favor that you're not going to shoot yourself? They are definitely in your favor. But if you're wrong, it's life changing or life ending in this case, right? So in trading, the most important thing everybody position size correctly. No matter how bad of a trader you are, if you position size correctly, you can't get hurt that much. And you know, I've said this many times, in order to get good at anything, whether it's guitar or sports, basketball, music, you know, whatever, dancing, you have to you have to do it. You have to practice it. You have to have the repetition of doing it. And trading is no different. You're never going to become a skilled trader if you don't have a lot of repetition, a lot of reps under your belt, and you don't have a lot of experience under your belt. If you start out trading and you position size too large and you get totally whomped up on, well, there goes your trading account. And how are you ever going to get good at trading? Does that make sense? So Keep yourself in the game by position sizing correctly. And just like Timothy says here, risk management is even more important than methodology. At least get the risk management right. You can always tweak the method later. And the method he's talking about, you know, your methodology, your trading methodology, support, resistance, all that stuff. But in my book, the most important uh, aspect of trading is your position size. You only have two things that you have any control of in trading, how many shares you buy and when you get in, right? And to me, the risk management comes down to how many shares you buy and when you get in, that's your methodology. But I'll tell you what, if you have a huge position and the stock's going against you, you really wish that you had not bought so many shares. So keep yourself into the game position size conservatively so that, you know, any one trade just is not going to ruin your day or ruin your count or ruin your life. If you're wrong, I've been there, everybody. I have been there. All right. So thank you, Timothy, for that. I hope that was helpful, but keep in mind, just position size conservatively, keep yourself in the game, get the repetition, repetition, get the experience, right? And you can always tweak your methodology later. I mean, of course you want to do that. You want to have good risk management and you want to have good, you know, entries and exit and tactical signals as well, for sure. But which one's more important? The risk management. Gary said Lyft and Uber are oversold. Lyft better than expected earnings and down big today. Well, we know about that, right? I mean, if a company has good earnings and it doesn't perform well, it's kind of a bad sign. Kind of a bad sign. If a company comes out with bad earnings and it goes up, well, that's bullish. Yeah, this is very oversold here for sure. I mean, looks like we probably went under the 30 RSI. I'm not sure. No, 31.43. It definitely is oversold. Let's look at the weekly, see if we can find any confluences. My guess is that this comes down on the weekly down here to about 50, close to $50. That's my guess. And if it does that, we'll also get a rejection of the, a real rejection of the 30 RSI and a rejection of the negative third ATR channel. So I would not be a buyer here of Lyft yet. It's about patience, everybody. It's about patience. Uber right there at the negative third ATR channel. Um, I like that it's rejected the negative third, but that's not enough for me. I want an under 30 over 30 on the weekly. Same thing. Very likely we'll come down to the negative one ATR channel on, uh, uh, on the weekly as well. And uh, so on the weekly, if we get down here and find support, that'll be good. If it does get there on the weekly, on the daily, we will have gone under 30 
over 30. So that's that's how I look at things. Kamal says, John, it was not in the scanner. I added it in. Let me know if there are any other tickers you want the scanner to follow. Oh, well, that's nice of you, Kamal. Thank you. David says, I was looking at the monthly for IBM last Friday, but I did not take it waiting for an entry. All right, there you go. There's the monthly. Well, it would have been up, but... I mean, we, on the daily, David, we are up here at that third ATR channel. Doesn't mean it can't go higher, obviously, but I would look for a, a pullback. Kamal says, IPGP, following knife, 30 RSI rejection. IPGP. Yeah, it's holding there at the 30 for sure. Let's look over on the weekly. Did it catch any support? See, there's, well, I guess technically it, it caught the negative uh, two ATR channels. So that's decent. We have a 5,200 uh, 5, golden cross here. I have noticed everybody, whenever you have a golden cross, a 5,200 golden, a 5,200 cross, 200 SMA cross in this case, I have found some of the best dips are when the price comes down and touches the slower moving average so if you had a five and a ten and then it came back down and touched that that's a lot of times that's where it bounces so here you have the 5200 golden cross i would wait for this to come down to the 200 on the weekly that that makes the most sense to me this this seems really volatile and scary and it tested the 250 above and it rejected it so yes it does have an under 30 over 30 but I mean, I don't even know about this company, right? Like I would be more apt to do that on Apple, but not on IPG F F Phonautics Corporation. Frank says, with a name like Lyft, I don't even know what, I don't even know what Frank's gonna, I haven't read the rest of the sentence, but I know it's gonna good, be good. With a name like Lyft, when a name like Lyft needs a Lyft, that's not good. I knew it was gonna be something like that. That's great, that's awesome. All right, so uh, again, just to be very clear, uh, I am exiting Budweiser today because earnings are tomorrow morning. This has been a great trade I'm out of that. Sprouts Fresh Market, I am also exiting. This has been a loss because of earnings. And then Netflix, no earnings, but we've lost the 250 day moving average. So these three are coming off the board for me today for sure. Jonathan says, MDB rejecting the 250. Okay, let's take a look. MongoDB. I have traded MongoDB a little bit in my day. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that it holds that 250 there. As you know, Jonathan, let's look at the weekly. Ah, no support on the weekly. It's lost the 50. So that's a little concerning to me. You know... You know I like when we have support at two different time frames. This one has lost support of the 50. So um, anyway, let me know what you let me know what you do on that one. All right, well, let's take a look at some potentials here. Uh, let's look at Bitcoin while we're here. So Bitcoin has produced a higher low V2, very close to a 520 crossover. We were below the negative one ATR channel. We rallied into the value zone. We came back, back tested the negative one ATR channel twice, and we have a V2. Here's day one. Day two washes out day one. Day three is currently above day one's close. That's a legitimate entry for any of you Bitcoiners out there. If I were to buy that, I would, of course, use my halfway of the washout bar here as my stop so the risk would be from here to here the reward maybe from here back up to the previous high so uh, this is this is good i've actually been trading bitcoin lately for a friend of mine helping him with his trading 
And uh, so I have been following Bitcoin very closely. We're getting close to a 520 crossover that does back test well from what I've seen. So, um, you know, this, if you're trading Bitcoin, this might get you in a little sooner before the crossover. Uh, the other side of that is it might come back down and the crossover never happen. I think probably waiting for the crossover if it's not too stretched when the crossover happens. I imagine the 520 crossover will be will bring some buyers in because Bitcoin so um, so widely followed. Twitter. All right. I have been looking for Twitter. We're at a 2784. Boy, I'll tell you what, it is hard to get a stock to go under 30, but still be above the 200 day moving average. I don't usually buy anything under 30, but I would buy Twitter under 30 if it rejected the 200 day moving average, because that would be some, you know, uh, strong, solid support below me and give me a good line in the sand. So I'm waiting for Twitter to test that 200 day intraday. And that is where I will buy Twitter, but not quite yet. Nike. Earlier in the day, Nike had a 520 crossover. It also had a V2. That's why it was on. That's why I was looking at this, and that's why the, the scanner, uh, Kamal scanner, picked it up. But now it has untriggered the V2, and it has untriggered the 520 crossover as well. So no interest for me in Nike. TTCF. Boy, I remember Johan had a monster trade on this tattooed chef. I don't even know what they do. I imagine it has something to do with chefs and tattoos, and perhaps tattooed chefs. Um, I do not see anything here today though. We are back in the value zone. I would be, it did trigger a higher low V2 earlier, but it is now untriggered. So the NASDAQ's down 28. Dow is still up. So there's a bit of divergence there. Okay. Cisco, pretty green today. Uh, is that a V2 close 51.17? It's right there. It is exactly right there. False breakout to the downside. Um, it did come from a lower low. This These formations are kind of a pick them. They're like a coin flip, but I still wouldn't buy this. Actually, I still wouldn't buy this, but it, it is good relative strength. That's for sure. OTEX, I don't see anything there. Open Text Corporation lost the... Uh, 100 day moving average that's now resistance above so I would not get involved in that TGP Tiki Long Partners uh, kind of range bound here it's been rejecting these levels here I don't see anything clear here at all QDEL has earnings tomorrow I don't see a clear entry signal here um, at all either B I I B. Um, we had the big up bar two days ago. We are holding about halfway of that. Um, yeah, I don't see anything. I don't see anything here either. I I V I. Well, that's kind of interesting. That is a that is a rejection of the 200 day two days in a row looks like a rejection of the 30 RSI or very closely. We do have earnings tomorrow though. I don't know if they're in the morning or the afternoon, so I'll probably pass on that, but that, it, that does look like a very good risk to reward ratio. And on the weekly, uh, I'd like, you know, on the weekly, it did reject the 50 EMA and the, and getting close to that previous low. I don't know anything about this company. It is up on the day, but again, earnings are tomorrow. And uh, so I'm not going to mess with IIVI. EBS. Under 30, over 30, under the negative third channel, over the negative third channel. MACD has crossed over. Not bad. Has the 200 day moving average right above it. That concerns me. So I'm going to pass on that one. DKNG up earlier in the day, triggered a V2, but now has untriggered. I don't see anything here on DraftKings that would I'd get very interested in. TER, nothing there either. Edit, you can see the whole market went up today and reversed back down. I don't see anything here as well. HAS. Hasbro, uh, nothing clear here. 
CMI, big strong day on Cummings Incorporated, but uh, if I would have bought this down here, I'd be getting out of half today, so I don't see anything here I'd be interested in as well. BDX, that could set up for a nice V2 tomorrow. We have a return to value, sideways motion, we washed out the low, did not trigger a V1 today, but we could have a V2 today after tomorrow after earnings. That could be interesting for tomorrow and then CERN wow sold off on earnings reversed right back up would I buy this with an intraday rejection of the 200 probably not because it's chasey and when I say chasey it means that it's extended above the 200 day moving average and uh, the risk to reward doesn't make sense the risk would be from here back to the 200 at the minimum and the reward is probably right back up here to the range so I honestly don't see anything right this second that interests me at all, not in the least. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Budweiser just right now. I'm not going to wait till the end of the day and I'm getting rid of that. That was a nice little profit. So we'll lock that one in on the monthly. Nah, Sprouts Fresh Market. I'll wait till the end of the day on this one. It looks like it's recovered more than before. And then Netflix, this definitely looks like it's closing under the 250. I'll wait a little bit on that as well. Does anyone have any anything that they think is interesting to look at today? On on my watch list and what I these candidates here, I don't see anything here. Uh, Jonathan's MDB was okay, but I don't think I like the weekly. Steve says I exited Fiverr for a loss. Also exited Beyond Meat for a loss. Um, John Dakota says coin is a falling knife. Is that a symbol? Coinbase Global. relatively new oh this is coinbase that was wow that has lost a lot yeah i don't i don't see anything here as well txn texas instruments that's an oldie but a goodie well at least it closed over the 50 day i mean you could use that 50 day as your stop here for sure let's see how high it got in the day though uh, John, let's see, did it get to 50? Got to 48.46, rejected the 10 day moving average. There was a gap here, but it filled a lot of the gap, which is good. Let's go over to the weekly. We had a big down bar last week, you know, about half ways of down bars. Right now, if we continue to move up, we might get up to like 184.80. So maybe we have a couple bucks, a little bit more than a couple bucks to the upside. Um, but right here, this green line, which is halfway of this big down bar on the weekly. Yeah. I mean, look, you could buy it if I'm not going to buy this, but you could buy this and just use the 50 day as your stop. I mean, being back above the 50 day, it, that's a positive sign and it is up today. Okay, ooh, I have to get out of CGT, CGC too. All these things I have to get out of. So I have to, okay, I got out of Budweiser. Gonna have to just keep my weed, my garden free of weeds, everybody. Take my loss on CGC like I'm supposed to with the close under the 200 day. Get out of Sprouts Fresh Market, take a loss on this as well because of earnings. And Netflix goes down every time I look at it. <laughs> So I'm going to have to get out of those as well. So I have time here. I'm going to get out of Netflix right now. I don't think there's any hope for Netflix today. All right, I got out of Netflix. I'm just going to go ahead and get out of CGC here as well. And get out of
out of Sprouts Fresh Market and take my lumps, right? Take my lumps like I'm supposed to. Boom, boom, boom. All right. And what else? I've got to get out of CGC over here. Mm-hmm. Get out of Sprouts Fresh Market. And get out of Netflix as well. All right, I'm all done. I'm all done other than buying my over my overnight spy trade. So we'll keep the winners. We'll get rid of the losers. Let's see what Apple's doing here. Yeah. All right. So I'm keep, keeping AGQ, keeping UNG, keeping Goldman Sachs, doing really well on that one. KMX, good. Honeywell is off of its high for sure, but I'm glad I did lock a little in there. I will be keeping that one and then the overnight spy trade. So that's pretty much it. Steve says SPCE, BIDU, and Lyft are the most interesting. Let's take a look at SPCE. Great risk to reward ratio at 3051, 3049. We, we have lost halfway to the big up bar yesterday, which concerns me a little bit. Earnings are on the 10th here. We do have a double bottom of bullish divergence, so that's also interesting. Let's see what else did Steve say? Oh, Baidu. Or Baidu. Yeah, that's down there too. I don't see a bullish divergence on that one. Lovis is way up on both Ben and BK. Well, that's good. Let's take a look. Oh, beautiful, 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 lover. Look at that. Holy hamburgers. Way to go, MBK. Yeah, Bank's doing really well there. Congratulations. It's 71.89 RSI, so it's been able to get above that 70 RSI. Resistance gone parabolic. Maybe it has, uh, maybe you can keep moving up. Way to go. Way to go, lover. All right. Gary's getting out of Beyond Meat and Bud. Steve says, industrials, energy, and financials are strong. George says, TMO V2 and rejected 200 SMA yesterday. Yeah, it did. It looks like it rejected the 50 RSI as well. And then you're right about halfway of this big bar down. Uh, it is a V2. You are correct. But I'd like to, I just don't think the risk to reward ratio is very good here, George. Steve says a, a, a Baidu 30 RSI 200 day SMA confluence would be a very good level for an entry if it gets there. Is the 200 down there somewhere? Oh yeah, 100%. That would be that would be outstanding. Any reason to sell BK or Ben? I wouldn't sell BK. You're above the you're above the 70 RSI. You're above the third ATR channel. You have both of those as as resist support below you. I would I would not get out of that might take a little profits <clears throat> no I mean they're doing great they're above BEN is also above the 70 also above the third ATR channel you know I would wait for a close below the previous day's low or rejection of the 50 before I did anything although like I just said I would be taking partial profits on some of these strength but that's just how I trade 
Do you have Intel on your watch list? I do. Intel's, you know, forming a range down here. Um, rejection of the 200 day moving average would make the most sense to me at this point. All right, so I got out of four positions today because of earnings or because of losses. So these are done. Budweiser, CGC, Sprouts Fresh Market, and Netflix. I'm not sure I've ever had a profitable trade on Sprouts Fresh Market, to be honest with you. Yep. Sometimes you have those stocks. Sometimes you have those stocks. No matter how good the setup is, for some reason, you just can't get them to go green. Let's look at the indexes. <clears throat> so the Q's got rejected by the, I think we're going down on the Q's. I bet you we go down at least down here to 325. I mean, I'm not betting on that. That I was being hyperbolic there, but let's look at this. Let's look at SPY. SPY's better. Let's look at DIA. Better than that. Definitely the industrials in the in the Dow Jones are doing the best, and obviously the Nasdaq's doing the worst. Honeywell hanging in there. Carmax hanging in there. And Goldman Sachs doing really well. Come on, get up there and hit that last profit target, would you please? That would be fantastic. So yeah, kind of tough lately. You know, I do you sense the change in the market? You know, is this is this just a dip to buy or is this gonna continue down? I wish I knew. I would tell you. I would tell you if I knew. I promise. but I don't. All I can do is follow the price action of what's going on. That's the truth, everybody. You know, I said before, stories, news, hype, that's not reality. The truth, the truth is what the chart's telling you, whether that's Bitcoin, whether that's, you know, whatever coin or whatever stock. Don't get caught up on what, what the propaganda is in the media or you know news stories and CNBC the truth is in the chart right if you know I have a lot of people tell me Bitcoin's going to a couple hundred thousand it may I mean I'm not disputing that fact at all but what I say is in order for Bitcoin to get above get to 200,000 it first has to get above that 50 well it did so that's good and we're close to a 520 cross over here uh, that is good as well. So who knows? We'll see. Bitcoin probably looks better to me than about anything that I've looked at today because it has a V2. It has a potential for a 520 crossover tomorrow. I should probably listen to myself on that, right? But I am, I am going to wait for the 520 crossover before I enter trades in Bitcoin accounts. All right, we have one minute to go. And the market is now closed. All right, so all I bought today was the SPY. At 4.15.75. All right, I bought it back about where I bought it yesterday.
415.75. All right, good and good. So listen, if any of my students have any entries for me today or exits that they would like me to post up on the board, this is the time to do it. Go ahead, just put it in the chat and I will get to it and we'll get them all taken care of. Before we do that, just three quick pieces of business. One, just want to remind everybody that I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via Skype. I teach a 15 hour course that consists of five sessions. Each session is three hours, just you and I. And I teach you everything I know about trading. I teach you the five different setups that I use in my trading. Each session, I teach you one of those approaches. I teach you step-by-step -step exactly how to do everything. When we're done with each lesson, you really should know how to trade that strategy perfectly. And of course, as I go through the course, each course, we review what we've done in the past, right? Just to do a review. But I do a lot of simulation trading with my students where I teach them what I'm going to teach them. I have them repeat it back to me. And then I test them to see if they really have comprehended um, and internalize what I have taught them. But once I feel that they have, then we go through, we do simulation trading. Okay, is this a trade? It is. How many shares are we buying based upon your parameters of, of, of your financial account? Uh, where's our end of day stops? Where's our emergency stops? How do we position size correctly? Where are our profit targets, right? And I just go day by day by day. And then you tell me, and that gives me a good bearing on how, uh, how you're comprehending it and internalizing what I'm teaching you. But it's a great course. Um, you know, the five different strategies that I teach you, you can use in about any market condition, whether things are trending up or pulling back or deep dip buys, double bottoms, bullish divergences, higher low V1s, V2s, return to value V1s, V2s. They're all really good approaches. And I've been using them uh, together in the aggregate for over 25 years. So you will be a better trader when you're done with this course. I think learning one-on-one -on -one is the very best way to learn anything. And that's why I teach this course one-on-one. -on -one. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of hours, but seriously, if you want to get good at something, you think you can just, you know, just do it real quickly. You don't just like anything else. And trading is one of the hardest things in the world, right? It's like the great game of life. So if you are interested in taking this course with me, it's $1,750, but I believe it's worth every penny because when you're done, um, I think you're going to be able to look at the markets a whole different way. So if you're interested, send me an email. The email is in the description of this video. Uh, just uh, when you send me the email in the uh, subject, just say, hey, Greg, I'm interested in taking your course. I will reply back and ask you uh, for us to set up a Skype call. That way I can learn a little bit more about you and your trading, your goals, your challenges, what you uh, would like to achieve by taking the course. And then it's also a good time for you to ask me questions uh, about the course during the call. And when we're done, think about it as long as you want. And um, uh, you know, if you decide, I think this is a good value and I think I want to do this with Greg, just send me an email back, say, I want to get scheduled. We'll get scheduled up and away we will go. And I will do my very best job. I work very hard at teaching my students. Uh, it's very important to me that my students succeed when they're done with my course. Um, secondly, I do have an online course. If you're not financially available to do the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, um, if you're not in the position financially to be able to do the one-on-one -on -one course with me, uh, I have a second alternative. I do have an online course called the Deep Dip by Stock Trading Strategy. It's available on udemy.com. I have the link in the description. The course is only like 12 or $15. It's really a great deal. Uh, that course is nine and a half hours. Uh, 26 videos, 15 study guides, and uh, it's a great course. It's a great course. I've got really good feedback, really good reviews, and the Deep Dip Buy strategy is one of my favorite ones. Uh, so the link's in the description if you were interested in checking that out. And lastly, if you like today's podcast, I really would appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button. It helps to build the channel, lets YouTube know that there's some valuable content here. And... Um, uh, it just helps the, it just helps the channel out if you could so if you could if you learned something today or in the past few days that was valuable hit the thumbs up button it, it will make my day all right so let's go over and take a look and see what everybody's doing today okay now i know steve okay steve got out of fiverr All right, so we're out of Fiverr there. We're out of Beyond Meat here. OK. 
Okay. Gary is out of Beyond Meat and Budweiser. Okay. Kamal said, Lava, he would sell a quarter of a third. That's how he would play it. I totally agree with that. Frank says, jobs report Friday could be a game changer. Yes, they often are. Thank you for thank you for that, Frank, letting us know and reminding us. Paxton is out of ARC. Good, Packy. I'm glad. I mean, it was it was a losing trade, but it was a good trade because you followed your rules. That's the most important thing. All right, so we're out of ARC. We're out of CGC. Again, good trade. I was in that trade. I lost money on that trade, but it was still a good trade for us because we followed our rules. We could get it again tomorrow. Out of Sprouts Fresh Market, rough day. Yep. All right. So I, so Tracy and Paxton are out there. Sprouts Fresh Market, I'm out there as well. Kamal, no trades. All right. George says, thanks. Learning learning all day from you great george i'm glad to hear that that's why i'm here um and please ask just please let me know if you have any other questions I'm happy to help lovis says lthm is up over three percent today the gregorian trades i've been making have been doing very well fantastic so you're an lthm as well great gary says i gotta run thanks greg and hope uh, everyone enjoys the rest of their day you too as well gary uh david is out of budweiser And Sprouts Fresh Market. Daniel, how you doing, Daniel? Hey, Gossip Trading Mentoring, what stock should I hold for tomorrow? Well, that's kind of a that's kind of a tough one, but uh, if you've been following what I am buying, I am holding AGQ, I'm holding UNG, I'm holding Goldman Sachs, I'm holding KMX, I'm holding Honeywell, I'm holding SPY was my overnight SPY entry. I got rid of Budweiser, Sprouts Fresh Market, and Netflix today, and I did not buy any new positions today other than SPY. So I'm holding the ones that are profitable. I'm I got rid of the ones that hit my stock. So I don't know if that helps, but those are the ones I'm holding for tomorrow. Frank said, sold 95% of Bud. I will let the rest run as the trailer. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what, uh, Frank, I'm going to just take that off. Um, I'm going to take that one off. I'm not going to keep the 5% up there. So I'm not going to keep trailers up there. Is that is that fair? Is that fair? I know you like the trailers and sometimes those really work out well. And I hope this one does for you. Okay, Jonathan is out of Sprouts Fresh Market and Budweiser for a 12.121%. Good. Excellent, excellent. So there, okay, so I'm take Bud's gone, Sprouts Fresh Market minus 2.4. Okay, that takes care of that. Was I the only person in Netflix? Fortunately. Lovis says, I can see only because I'm standing on the shoulders of a giant. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Well, you know, my whole purpose for having this podcast, everybody, is for you to be able to see without standing on the shoulders of anyone. You need to be able to do this by yourself, right? And uh, I think love is there. I think love is there. But you don't want to rely on any show or any podcast or whatever. I mean, you need to be able to be able to do this for yourself. And and uh, I think I think love is there. I don't think you need to stand on anybody's shoulder. John says, 
I'm still in my arc short. If it fails to defend the 109 level, it's going to be very profitable. Oh, you're short. You're short arc. Okay, good. John says, if not, then I close, take my gains and go. Sounds like a plan. Frank says, absolutely. They drive everybody nuts. <laughs> They're good trades. You don't have you don't have trailers unless they're good trades. So that's the good news. Kamal says, thanks, Greg. Have a great day, everyone. You too as well, Kamal. And Jonathan says, cheers, guys. All right. All right. So as always, I just want to read this little statement. I hope it's helpful for everyone. If we all do one random act of kindness daily, we just might set the world in the right direction. Well, I would like it the world was set in the right direction, wouldn't you? So how do we do that? Oh, we just do one random act of kindness daily. So, you know, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, everybody, but I really do believe in this. You know, try to go out and try to do something nice for somebody each day. What is it going to hurt you? It's going to make your day. It's going to make their day, right? Why not do it? Just something simple, just a small gesture, just at least to be pleasant, right? And, you know, doubly as good if you could go out and try to do something for an animal, a nice gesture for an animal today, that would be fantastic as well. I mean, just imagine if everybody went, like purposely did one nice thing for another human being every day and did one nice thing for another uh, for an animal every day. The world would be a better place, right? You can feel it. That's just a true statement, right? So let it start with us and let's just try to make that a goal and a habit of doing something nice every day for someone and for an animal as well. All right. So the Dow ended up 93 points. NAS down 51 and the S&P up 2.93%. What's going on after hours? Do we even care? SPY is unchanged. VIX is up 10 cents. All right. Well, like I said earlier, it is a beautiful day here in Utah. I'm excited to get up on my hike. Everything's green, nice weather. All right. Lova says, thank you for everything. Thank you, Lova. Proud of you, my friend. Really am proud of you. I'm look, I look forward to your analysis every single day. And I know a couple of your analysis have been nice and profitable. What was that one? Was it uh, Angie's list? I mean, what? I think Steve made 11% or 12 or 13% on that. That was fantastic. So keep up the good work. I'm sure everyone is starting to appreciate your analysis because you're really putting time and energy into it. And I am proud of you. Really, really proud of you. All right. Well, I think that's it for today, everyone. Uh, unless anybody has any other questions, I'm happy to get to them. I'll hang out here for a second. If you could hit the thumbs up button before you get out of here, that I would really appreciate it as well. If you haven't already. And if you have, thank you. All right. Well, I think that's it. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow, which is Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. U.S. government required disclaimer. Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice 
and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.